We are in Fort Lauderdale. I'm uh, in the condo, and I'm looking out on the Atlantic Ocean. So spring break. You're Enjoy it. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another ISB Radio special with John Laskowski, brought to you, of course, by Culver's as we come to you live from Yogi's here in Bloomington. And a very special welcome to former Indiana basketball coach Mike Davis, the 2002 national runner-up and, of course, coach at Detroit Mercy now and Florida Atlantic coach Dusty May, former IU manager. What a great night and a great group of guys to have on. Uh, thanks. First of all, thank you guys for taking the time to join us. Great to be here, uh, Jim. Great to be on, Jim. John, how long has it been since you've gotten to see Coach Davis and Coach Davis and vice versa? This is one of the things I love is getting to see you guys talk. Well, he moved out to Texas for a while and then got to Detroit. I saw him on the AU trail back uh, six, seven, eight years ago. My son was playing AU and Coach Davis, he was out looking for players to go to uh, Texas Southern. So I caught him out there. I uh, haven't seen Dusty May in a while, but I'll tell you, Dusty, I was with uh, Tom Abernathy yesterday. Right. He has his condo over in Bonita Springs. I drove over, and, uh, of course, uh, Tom's son, Todd, is an assistant coach for Dusty at Florida Atlantic. Todd spent some time at Ole Miss, and now he's with Dusty. And uh, you got a good one there in Todd Abernathy, I'll tell you that, Dusty. Absolutely. Tom Tom comes to a lot of games. He's been a great sounding board for us, and uh, – yeah, it's, it's, it's really neat to have so many Hoosier connections. And, and Dusty, Mike Davis, you... I'll tell you, do you remember when little Antoine Davis was a little kid <laughs> running yeah. around Assembly Hall, getting in the way, but he was chucking that ball up even all that time ago. And, and uh, Coach Davis, do I understand that he's a real scorer nowadays? He's scoring some points, isn't he? He's still chucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> he's still, and now they're going in, I hear it. Yeah. Fife, Fife sent me a picture today of uh, he and Antoine at the press conference. Uh, Antoine was sitting in his lap, so that was that was nice of him to send that picture to me. Terrific, terrific. Dusty, when you were at UAB, was that under Coach Davis? I I, I couldn't remember. I looked up the times. I thought it was Davis at Indiana and UAB, and uh, probably he's had as much influence as any person that, that I can that I know of on my uh, on my coaching and me personally. Well, I was texting with him earlier. I, one of the things I, I didn't intend to say this earlier, but it's, it's kind of funny. I said, you know, you're the only, besides Coach Knight, I think he's the only former IU basketball coach that is liked in Bloomington. <laughs> and I'm not, not kidding. I'm like, oh, man, I started to think about that. He's the only guy that's liked here besides Coach Knight, uh, which is great. But uh, so, but we look forward to you coming back sometime. But thank you guys again for joining us. Of course, a lot going on for Indiana basketball. And, of course, a big connection for you guys this week with Dane Fife. Uh, uh, kind of a surprise for me uh, and a lot of some people, but maybe not for others, but a great move for Indiana. But Dane, I don't think he could be any happier. Coach Davis, a, a very special connection for you with Dane, having coached him and uh, went to that 2002 run with those guys. Well, I tell a lot of Dane Fife stories all the time. And the one I always tell to all my friends that it wasn't one game that we played in that the official didn't bring Dane and whoever he was defending over and had to talk to Dane about <laughs> not getting into a fight or whatever kind of thing Dane was doing. It wasn't one game. Every game we played in, Dane had to come over with, with the official and talk to me. Keep that in mind. To remember that, John, you'll be in the Assembly Hall quite a bit, so you can handle that. But, uh, Dusty, you were in Michigan in the late oh. 60s. And then, of course, he, he was a high school coach for uh, – uh, Coach the sons there as well. He had another brother go to Michigan. And uh, I did send Dane a text. Uh, I congratulate him on the job. Uh, great to have him back uh, in Indiana. And the staff, he was good for a short time as a graduate assistant when he first left uh, playing. And the phone rang right away. And he called me. I said, hey, good to hear from you. He was actually driving to Bloomington uh, that night. It would have been Tuesday night. Uh, to get started. So he's so excited to be here and can't wait to get started. And Coach Davis, you know this, I think on a staff, you want to have a lot of different type of guys, different personalities, uh, different egos, if you will, because you can't have five guys that are all the same because the kids are all different personalities as well. And so I think what Indiana's done is really put together some different types of personalities, different coaching styles. Uh, Mike Woodson, he's an easygoing guy. He's kind of a gentle giant, if you will. Bad Mata, he's just very intense. You've seen him on the sidelines when he's at Ohio State, jumping around and 
and mm -hmm. and, and they're kind of opposite. Fife is, is a little like that as well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Coach Davis, you found that true? You have to have different type of coaches on your staff? You do. The main thing is just having coaches that can understand your players. And Dane is that guy. I'm so happy for him to be a part of the program. Uh, his heart has always been at Indiana. Uh, even when he was a head coach and assistant coach, I think he um, he jumped on the opportunity. And I'm just happy for him. Dusty, you know, you go through the trials and tribulations of trying to get to both or as, as you, you as well, Mr. Coach Davis, but of getting to that uh, spot, uh, trying to achieve that head coaching spot. Coach Davis has been a head coach for some time now, but as you try to climb that ladder, it's a long and arduous climb. Uh, the, the, the dedication that, that, that comes along with that, like John just said, he was driving to Bloomington. There was a picture of him unloading. Well, I think it was last night. I think he's staying at Mike Roberts' house. Uh, right now, but uh, talk about the, the, the life of, of a coach getting to that point, but finding getting that place where you love. It, it's a unique experience, and Dane, uh, Coach Davis hired Dane as a GA, and so he moved one seat over from me every day, and without a doubt, he, he dove uh, headfirst into coaching from his playing career and, and just has a unique way with people, so um, – but, yeah, D Dane's going to be a head coach again at a very high level in the near future. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's awesome for Indiana University to get him back because he's, he's, he's learned under some of the best, and uh, he'll, he'll, he'll be able to, to help Coach uh, Woodson take the program to the next level. And, Co John, uh, you've, we've talked about this, this, the Indiana thing bringing back uh, a lot of the tradition that had kind of been lost, but uh, more importantly, just winning. Uh, forget about tradition right now. Just winning is, is the most important thing, and they're putting a plan and is no and a developing group. that culture. Go ahead, John. And the tough part for the coach is to to get those recruits who can play his style of ball. Mike Woodson is different than Dusty May and Mike Davis, but he's got to recruit kids that will uh, adjust to his style and learn that style. So after you've been there a few years. Then uh, as you watch Indiana on TV, you'll see what kind of style Mike Woodson plays. And you say, wait a minute, I, I can play that style. I like that. And that's that's when kids can raise their hand and say, boy, I'd love to come to Indiana. And if they're a good enough player, we'll sure take them. And Coach Davis, to talk about styles, there's not always one way to do things. And you have to learn as you go along. And Dane, of course, has been under several different people yourself. He started there. And, of course, Coach Izzo was the last. But melding those different styles and finding your own, how, how difficult is that? Or do you have a kind of a plan going in? What, what's the setup for that? The first thing is just effort, you know, giving great effort. And no matter what style you play, slow, fast, uh, the effort has to be there for sure. And uh, I just think that – and plus you need players. Uh, Indiana got two really good commitments. The one kid they got from Pittsburgh, um, he's originally from Alabama, but I watched him on video. He's really, really good. And the Stewart kid can really shoot the basketball. I think he has 18, 19 points in, in the league he played in. So that's two players, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, that, that's a lot different from anything that they've had in a while in the backcourt. And, John, you've seen this team and the struggles they've had, but uh, the team is back. Most of the kids are coming back. Uh, that's a huge importance for continuity, uh, if anything else. But that shows that they're buying in to Coach Woodson uh, and the rest of that. So that is also huge. Buy-in is as important as anything from your players. Absolutely. You know, a lot of the kids were in the portal, and, uh, and all but one has decided to come back. And then you see right away the Stewart kid, uh, change, he's going to stay with uh, with Coach Kenyon Hunter uh, on the staff, and I think, and, and you two coaches know it as well. These kids get to know each other in AAU, and they talk to each other. Hey, why don't you come here? Come be a, be my teammate, and uh, and that's good because they're already friends and they kind of know each other now. They need to learn what this new coach is like. Both Dusty and Mike have gone to to schools in their first year, and that's got to be the toughest year as they get to relate to those players, find out who's coming back and new players they're going to bring in and how do I mesh that together. And, you know, with this portal thing, you know, I heard uh, Kelvin Sampson say, you know, what's the use of, of recruiting? Just go to the portal every year and bring guys in and, and why not run a team like that? That's an interesting concept. I'm anxious to see what Mike Davis and Dustin may think about that. 
Well, I was five minutes from putting Antoine in the porter uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the porter is the way to go now. You know, I, I think one thing Mike Woodson has over a lot of coaches that he was a head coach in the NBA, kind of like Eric Musman at Arkansas and Juwan Howard at uh, Michigan wasn't a head coach, but he was with the Miami Heat, which was a great program, a great system. So uh, Mike's going to do a great job because the conversation that Mike can have with a lot of his players, all these guys think they're NBA players. And so Mike will be able to um, talk to them, uh, relate to what they're trying to do, teach them, grow their talents to a different level. Uh, it's going to be very, very exciting to see Indiana play basketball. And John, uh, you and Dusty as well. Now, Dusty, you were a manager here at IU, and Indiana's had a, a great uh, a deal of their managers, either at high school or the college level, even the pro level, um, you know, with Frank. Um, talk about what you learned while you were at Indiana as a manager. I mean, yeah, you're chasing towels and bringing drinks out, but talk about the other stuff you learned. You learn so much in, uh, about every aspect of the game and the systems, how they communicate with recruits, how Coach Knight uh, manages practice and, and everything. But just to piggyback on what Coach Davis said with Parker Stewart and the, and the Johnson kid from Pittsburgh, our game, there's five players on the floor. And if you can add one shooter or two shooters, it naturally makes everyone else better. So uh, just just one impact player can change the whole trajectory of a team. And in our situation, we're probably the only team in the, in the country that hasn't been uh, active in or out of the portal right now. We had a six-year senior enter the portal, and, and none of our other guys have. So uh, it's been a pretty quiet spring for us. Um, but the, 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 so many things that I've learned would, uh, at Indiana, since Indiana. Um, but more than anything else, the older I get, the more I refer back to what I learned the first couple of years uh, as, as far as attention to detail. Uh, the simplicity and execution. And I even catch myself using a lot of Coach Knight's sayings just because they make more sense to me now that I'm, I'm in my mid-40s, older, and coaching a team. So the things you learn, you don't even realize you're learning as much as they become ingrained in who you are. Four yeah, but one, that's one. Four to one. <laughs> your, your, your school, uh, Florida Atlantic, is located in Boca Raton, Florida, you recruit smart kids. Why would anybody say, I'm, I'm ready to leave Florida Atlantic. I'm going to go play in Maine or Vermont or Montana. It's not going to happen, Dusty. We have a six-year player stand, and we laugh all the time. We say, I wouldn't leave either. And, and, and yeah, we, we can't make our guys go. They, they I asked Coach Davis. I was like, man, you're on the wrong end. He's he's too far up north. He's up in Detroit. This, uh, but fun yeah. city, but – didn't have this tan working for Coach Dave. <laughs> it's, it's too cold up there for me, but, uh, yeah, but it's a great basketball town, though, that's for sure. How has it been like for you in Detroit, Coach? Well, I love Detroit. The first couple of years have been tough because we uh, I got the job so late, and then last year, we was on, two years ago, we, we was on probation. So this past year was really our first year of being able to recruit and, and work with our players and – we had a good year. We finished third. Uh, we got some really good guys coming back. Got some really good guys coming in. Like I said, that transfer portal has been great for us because uh, we can just go to the transfer portal. It saves you money. It saves you a lot of things that you wouldn't uh, normally do. So I love the transfer portal. And what year is Antoine now, Coach? He's a junior. He has two years to play. Really? Okay. And what? how much did he score? Let the folks know. What was his scoring average this year? Uh, 24 game. He finished, and that was in the top 10 in the country, right? Well, he I finished he was third. A senior. He finished third, and he was point. The, the guy who was led was 24.5, 24.4. He was 24 even. So, you know, he he may be a Hoosier one day. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to see him doing so well. Great job with him. Appreciate that. Yeah, it, it's a, I, I thought he was a senior. He's been doing so well. I was like, well, what? he's got two years left. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. He's got he two years. That's a lot of that's a lot of points he's going to be scoring up there. But that's how much fun is that for you to see? I know back in the days, they went to Bloomington North, I think. Is it, is it North High School, I think, here in Bloomington? But, but back in the day, how's it, it, it seeing him now it, it, to succeed at that level? I mean, I know seeing your kids succeed is awesome, but that's – Man, one of the tops in the country, that's, it, it, that doesn't get any more special than that. Well, he works hard. He put a lot of time in. And if you're going to be good, you have to put a lot of time in. And uh, like I said, some days he, 
he want to put his name in the portal. Some days he want to sign with an agent, and you know it all depends on the mood I'm in and how hard I make him work. But uh, it's been fun coaching. And Mike, my uh, older son, he's my assistant coach, so it's like a family affair going on up here in Detroit. And coaching's a lot easier. Your, uh, your league and your team, how are they doing? Um, we finished seventh out of 14 this year, which is the, the highest FAU's ever finished in the league history. Uh, we've had three straight winning seasons for the first time in school's history. We're a relatively new school um, that hasn't had much success or tradition. So we have most of our team back. We have probably percent of our production back from a good team that, that won five of our last six and had the number one seat on the ropes uh, last game of the year. So we're excited about the direction we're going in and, uh, uh, we feel like we can we can be top three or four in our league next year out of fourteen in Conference USA. That would be a heck of accomplishment. But we're we're going in the right direction. And, uh, and we Todd have- Abernathy, how how long has Todd been with you? And is he trying to work his way up to be a head coach someday? Todd has been here two years, and and he's without a doubt a future head coach. He's he's incredible with our players. He's got a great mind for the game. Obviously, with his DNA, and people don't realize how good of a player uh, Todd was at Ole Miss. Uh, Coach Davis's good friend Rod Barnes signed him at Old Miss, yeah. Yeah. and uh, he went down and had a heck of a career, played overseas, and, and he's as connected as, as probably anyone in college basketball uh, with the European players, and we have a very European feel to our team. Uh, he's, he's, he's been phenomenal, and, not, and obviously having Tom around uh, has, has been really unique with, with someone such a, a, a basketball background. We had lunch yesterday, and he still had a smile on his face with that Gonzaga loss on Monday, keeping no the 1976 Indiana Hoosier team, the last undefeated team. It, it looked bad going into it with Gonzaga with such a good team, but that's what it comes down to. One game, anything can happen, and Baylor just would not have uh, anything to do to lose that game right from the start, 9 to nothing. What did you guys think of that game? Well, I fell asleep. <laughs> it was on <laughs> – once you get 60 years old, you just kind of like doze in and out. You can't control what time you go to bed. So I fell asleep and woke up at uh, halftime, and I, I decided not to watch the second half because I was going to watch it the next day uh, on video. But I watched so much family clips of it. Uh, Baylor was just tough, just really, really tough. And that's the kind of team that you want to have as a coach. Every, every coach wants a team like that that goes out and plays both ends of the court. Absolutely. Baylor had such a chip on their shoulder, uh, and, and I was very familiar with a lot of their players. They, they hit the transfer portal hard, and a lot of those guys were transfers that, that scored a lot of points at the low major level and then came there and bought into their role. Uh, but it was fun to see two contrasting styles of two teams that are you can learn a lot from watching. Uh, but without a doubt, Baylor just had more edge and, and more determination uh, on, on that night. Well, Jim, that was the third team that went into the championship game undefeated and lose, of course, the other two had Indiana ties, Indiana State with Larry Bird in 79. And then way back in 1961, Ohio State with a Bob Knight as Bob reserve Knight. lost the championship game undefeated. So now there's three. Hey, Laz, let me piggyback on that. Memphis was very close. I think they went to the final four undefeated with Derrick Rose. Is that right, Coach Davis? I'm not sure. I think so. I'm not and sure. We had, <laughs> we had. No, no, they lost. They lost one game to Tennessee that year. Okay, okay. We had them everything but beat at UAB that year. Yeah. We were up eight with 50 seconds left and, and found a way to lose that one. Well, I started coaching. I was up eight with 50 seconds. I started coaching, <laughs> and they won the game. <laughs> yeah. It was all eight hit. with 50 <laughs> seconds to go. Wow. Coaching. You got to be a comedian. You gotta, that's your backup line in work. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how we messed that one up. I do want to say this, though. Coach Drew at Baylor uh, is a great, great, great coach, and I think now – he should definitely be in that top 10 coaches of, of college basketball, of coaches right now. He's really, really good. Uh, we stole a lot of his defense uh, here at Detroit. I watched a lot of stuff this summer, and he's been close a lot, been close a lot. But uh, this year he put the team together, and those guys fought, and he deserves a lot of credit. Go ahead, John. Keep. Well, I'd like to I, I, I this thing. say before, before we end this, what uh, – the great job Mike Davis did in a tough situation first year in coaching. You know, that happened in the fall just before practice ready to start. There was some question on who the next coach was going to be, and uh, Mike Davis stepped up and said, I'll take that responsibility. And, and as he now knows, that is an absolutely huge responsibility to be the coach at Indiana. And uh, he had some great players coming back. He put that team together and took them all the way to the final game. 
before they lost. And, and I want to I want to thank Coach Davis for that great year he had. I had a chance to be his host on his TV show that year, so I got to follow along with him and the struggles uh, that he had. But boy, when that tournament started, he had that team ready to go to Atlanta and just to fall the game short. Uh, that was a great effort on your part, Mike Davis, and we want to thank you again for that. I appreciate. It. I love. I, I as looking back, I love every minute of it. Uh, I always give Indiana the credit for where I am now, uh, because if not me being able to be the head coach at Indiana, I would not be the head coach here at Detroit or UAB or Texas Southern. So, Indiana has been nothing but great to my, uh, me and my family, and and we love the Hoosiers. Well, yeah, everybody. Uh, I'm told Coach Davis he's the only uh, ex IU coach besides Knight that's liked here in Bloomington, and that's for a reason. Though he's he's just a, a great guy, but yeah, I, I don't think people really understand or can. I can't even understand, but I know what it, the pressure. First of all, following Coach Knight, and then all that comes with that. It's it's no one can do that, but somehow you did. Uh, I don't know how you did, but you did, and you did it as without having experience doing it. Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, and so, you know, look at Coach Woodson. He's got all this experience, NBA and all that, but yet he's coming into Indiana. He may not feel a ton of pressure because he's been around long enough, but there is a ton of pressure just on that position. It's, it's Indiana. It's just one of those places where that hat weighs heavy, no matter who's wearing it. Well, I just think the one thing that – was overlooked with my team that year was the toughness that we had. Fife, Coverdale, Hornsby, Odom, Jerry Jeffers, Newton, all those guys. They was tough. And so them having the toughness and the courage and the um, ability to have the mindset to overlook everything and, and come together with one heartbeat uh, took us to a national championship game. And those guys, uh, A.J. Moyer and those guys were just nothing but tough, tough, tough guys. And uh, you look back on it, you know, you're always looking for a team but what, what was overlooked with that team was the toughness that those guys had. Well, the other thing, Coach Davis, uh, Mike Woodson's comment on as well, he likes that three-point line, and, and that team that you had made a lot of three-pointers. How about that Kent State game down in Lexington, Kentucky? They just came out blitzing the three-pointer, and that game was over very early with the great start they have. So I think the three-point shot is going to return to Indiana. We're going to get some guys that uh, that can hit that shot, and some of the guys on the current team can are able to do that. We just got to get them that right shot and look for Indiana to become more of a three-point shooting team than they have in the past. But Dane can certainly teach them how not to foul a three-point shooter in the last uh, seconds of a game, huh? Ooh, <laughs> that's oh, a no. tough one there. Hey, we uh, won that no, game. I'm, Don't worry I'm, about I'm, it. No, I'm teasing him about it on the show. Don't worry about it. Oh, he's great. <laughs> hey, Jim, oh, I, he's... I, I remind Dane uh, every time I talk to him, he's this close to being Bill Buckner. If Indiana <laughs> 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 that's right. Yeah, it was, it, he was lucky who he fouled. It was lucky he fouled the right guy for certain. And, and luckily, he he was doing layup after the, after yeah. the <laughs> well, b- before we let you guys go talk uh, just the last words on mike woodson and, and dane fife and where the program is going and, and how you think that this means uh to indiana coach coach davis uh let's go with you first well like i said before mike woodson has a lot of lot of um experience and uh, when i was a head coach at, at indiana uh, i talked to mike about being my assistant coach uh, back back when i was the head coach and so uh, he went on to be a, a head coach in the NBA, uh, having Fife back. Uh, the fans should be really, really excited about the direction of the program. You know, it's a, it's a tough job. It's a tough job. But when you have the support that Mike would have and Dane would have, you know, I don't I don't think any other basketball would, would be the same the way it's been with the pressure that, that the other guys have had uh, following Coach Knight. I think everybody now be on board, and they need that. We, uh, I say we because – Indiana is always going to be a part of me uh, as a coach. I think we need to come together and the fans and everybody just needs to support regardless of what goes on, just stay locked in on the players and the program because, you know, it, it will get back to where it's supposed to be, and that's the final four and that's the championship game. And you're the last person to take them there, so I, I agree with you. It's, we'll get back there. Dusty, uh, your thoughts? It, it, it's a neat experience because now I'm a fan. Um, I have a son of Florida, so I root for them and I root for Indiana. Those are the really, other than my team, the only rooting interest I have in college basketball. And I, I, I thought when they hired him, I said, if he can keep this team together, because I thought I, I watched him a few times and I thought this team had potential. If he could keep this team together, he's going to win this year 
and develop some positive momentum. And then Indiana is one of those places where every day it's recruiting itself, where the st- what people are saying about the program is, is really influential and in, in what kids hear and recruits hear. And I think that's him getting off to a great start is going to be huge for the, the long-term, um, I guess, uh, progress of the program. But without a doubt, coaching is the least of his concern. He's an, an unbelievable coach, unbelievable communicator. And I think everyone will play better than they would have otherwise just by having Coach Woodson and then, and then a great staff under him. Laz, well, when, uh, when Bob Knight graduated from Ohio State in 1962, he spent two years at Cayuga Falls High School – uh, and then he went to be the Army coach. He was 24 years old, head coach at West Point, stayed there stayed there seven years. He was 30 years old. He hadn't had his birthday yet. 30 years old, he got the Indiana job. And look at the family tree that he has created since then. All these, these two men included, the Mike Woodsons, the Randy Whitmans, uh, all these folks who have become manager or coaches, and uh, and gone on to the great things, and the, the family tree just keeps growing. And uh, you've heard what Mike and Dusty have said about what Coach Knight, how he impacted him. And guys, I get the privilege of, of being in Bloomington and seeing Coach every week. I go to visit him, and uh, I'll tell you what he what he gave me. He gave Woodson some coaching advice already. He told me he said. As long as Mike doesn't do anything dumb, he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got Hopefully Coach's blessing, and, uh, and we are very excited. As you can see, Mike and Dusty both think that's the right hire for Indiana, Jim, and uh, we can't wait for the start of the season. I think Dusty's right. It's not going to take a long time to get this thing turned around. We missed a couple free throws here and there. We were in a lot of big games this year. So uh, we, uh, we look forward to next year, and I want to wish Dusty and Mike Great success with their teams and in their future as well. And, and great to see you two guys again. Thank Thanks you, for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you all so much. Look forward to uh, having you all on again. You've always been such a great uh, friend to us. We appreciate you all. John Laskowski, make sure you go out and visit the Culver's in Bloomington. Make sure you cheer on Detroit Mercy up in Detroit this year and the FAU. What you? What are you guys? FAU what? We're the, uh, we're the owls. And uh, if, if, if anyone wants to visit in, in the wintertime is, is when you want to do it. January, February. Smart thinking. <laughs> smart thinking. That's why he's a coach. He's a smart minutes, guy. About 20 miles away now. You can ask him. It's, it's probably probably for beautiful, a visit. Day. beautiful day. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. And uh, thanks, Thank of you, course, to everybody at the Culver's right. and uh, with uh, Yogi's. You guys have a great night. Appreciate everyone so much. Uh, safe travels for everybody. I uh, wish you guys a happy night. And until uh, next time, I'll see you on the radio.